Welcome to my Full Life and Faith Leaps podcast with me, Tiffany Jo Baker, where we help you experience God's power and rest in your purpose and progress as you move forward step by step in all the things God has called and created you to do at home and around the world. Well, hello, y'all, and welcome back to my Full Life and Faith Leaps podcast with me, Tiffany Jo Baker. Y'all, I am here with um, a story that might seem like it's not your story, but if you've been called to walk out this Christian journey for any length of time, you've had or will have an opportunity to love even when it hurts. Whether that's um, loving somebody who doesn't love you back, whether that's loving somebody who is in a really, really hard place and you don't know what to do or it's really hard to show up. Um, I invite you to just really lean into this episode. I've already been crying. I've already had to Mm -hmm. in just like five minutes of talking with uh, my guests. And as I was praying this morning, I felt like the Lord said, this is a holy time, a holy space and a holy work. In my prayer, in, in this next 15 minutes or so is that the Lord would um, heal your heart, speak hope into you and to let you know that the work that you are doing right in your space, whether that's your kitchen, the boardroom, or even from a hospice, like my guest, Julie Boyd today, that you would know that you truly are the hands and feet and that God is doing a mighty, mighty work, and you're not alone. Well, my guest today is Julie Boyd, and she is, among many things, an author, a community builder, and a nonprofit leader who works in the intersection of faith, global health, and human dignity. Y'all, for 18 years, she's lived and worked in Africa, Founding and serving as the International Director of Living Room International, a community-led nonprofit providing hospice and palliative care services to adults and children in Western Kenya. Julie, thank you so much for joining us. My privilege to be here. Well, I know I want to I want to dive in because it, there's so many things I could ask you. I've been reading your book, Brave Love. And I, lo- I love the title of that. Um, but some of the words, I just want to start by by reading just a small section of what you wrote, if that's okay. And then we can kind of dive in. And, um, so Julie runs, like I said in her intro, she runs, has founded and leads um, a hospice center in Western Kenya. And they serve those who either are on a healing journey or it's the end of their journey. Um, And you can imagine the stories that she's walked beside, but let me just read a small section. It says, the babies come to us looking like they will not. No, they cannot survive. But our team lovingly cares for them time and again. Often they've recovered in such dramatic ways in just a few weeks that they are almost unrecognizable. A combination of medical science and extreme mercy lived out moment by moment makes way for miracles. Not the instantaneous poof and it's done kind, but a slower way, devoid of quick fixes or easy solutions. The miracles we see come wrapped in a sort of patience and kindness intertwined with an awareness that there's no hurrying this sort of healing. As I would come to understand in my own healing, yes, God could speed it up, but perhaps the gradualness is part of the kindness and part of what is needed most. Julie, could you just share, I guess, kind of just dive in and share a little bit about what you do and about what God's done in you through this journey? Yeah, so I moved to Kenya as a 25-year-old. I was single at the time, a nurse practitioner, and I thought I was going for a year or two, and now it's been 
nearly two decades. And I've watched God faithfully lead my steps and allow me to walk alongside. At this point now, um, I help to lead 150 Kenyans who are doing the work every day of caring for our patients. And um, and I realized, like, as I was writing the book, you know, as I was reflecting on the stories and remembering and putting words to things that fill my heart, you know, it wasn't just story next to story. It's the way that the stories have now woven together and have really shaped who I am, um, you know, held together by the themes of courage and compassion and what that looks like within community. And that has been the greatest privilege to be able to do this work within community, to be able to see God's faithfulness that isn't dependent upon outcomes, mm -hmm. that his love doesn't change, you know, and in, even in that passage, we're talking about healing and um, and really, I think so much of our work isn't about whether someone is healed towards, you know, like a cure versus someone who we get to sit beside until they take their final breath that what God has invited us to do is to love. And that requires patience and kindness and, you know, that love is costly. And so there's, there has definitely been, um, things that, you know, like, We've had days where we weep. There are days where we rejoice together. Um, but that God has been with us and has been full. And um, and I, I really, I, you know, I didn't know this is what my life would look like. And, and my hope is that if I were somewhere else doing something, you know, different, that I would still be asking the question, you know, what does it look like to love in the situation wherever I am um, and lean into that, trusting that God would guide that and would honor that. And, you know, as we're called to love God and to love one another as we love ourselves, like, what does that look like? Mm, I love what you said. You said love is costly. Wow. You know, love costs Jesus his life. Love costs God, his only son, allowing his son to be the sacrifice for us. You know, love in your circumstances is sitting next to the bedside, comforting um, a mother who's watching their child die from HIV and AIDS and taking their last breath. Love is um, you as a mama walking out the healings and the, the chronic illness of your children love is costly. I think we just need even just rest in that. You know, a lot of times we think love is like, you know, I have two um, young adult girls, you know, and, and we think love is, is rainbows and unicorns, you know, and it's, it's all the gushy stuff and, and, and Valentine's is coming up and all those things, but love is costly. And I think that love is not only how can I help this person who's sick, but how do I remain vulnerable or present within the moments? How do I not just offer my strength, but also allow myself to remain tender mm -hmm. when, you know, there's a, a quote by a palliative care doctor that just talks about, her name's Sunita Puri, that I've learned to stay when I prefer to run out of the room and that the prelude to compassion is a willingness to see. Mm -hmm. And I feel like part of the cost is not just how do I serve, but how do I also remain human in a way that um, allows me to continue to look, to continue to feel, to continue to stay present mm -hmm. um, when I think there can be a temptation to, you know, to choose to be numb or to choose mm -hmm. to look the other direction because mm -hmm. it's painful to see yeah. um, and not just to see someone else's woundedness, but also to reflect on, you know, the wounds that are within me or the, you know, the things within me that I need help. Like how do I, we stay um, available and willing and tender with that? And, and I feel like it's, I feel like it's impossible to follow God um, without doing it wholeheartedly. And we can't be wholehearted if 
we're not remaining tender. Um, so that's so good. Yeah, this, I think this courage or this bravery, some, I used to think about being brave as being unafraid, but really like the definition of bravery is a willingness, like in those places that might feel a little bit scary or might feel like something that makes me uncomfortable. If that's where God is leading me, how do I remain present within that and trust that he will guide and protect and, um, and strengthen. So it's yeah. so good because I because healing I love you you all focus on not just the physical healing but the emotional healing and the spiritual healing and you talked about staying and presence and there's a healing power in presence and just being there there's a healing power in the Holy Spirit's presence there's a healing power in our presence just being with somebody. We don't have to have the answers. We don't have to have, um, all of the things, all we have to do, like you said, is sometimes just be, and that alone is healing. And I think with the trust that as we are choosing to be present, that God's spirit is mm -hmm. there, is here, is at work, is like goes before and surrounds and hymns in and like, mm -hmm the the love that we're being invited to be a part of is not just from ourselves it's not just how do i muster up enough patience and kindness and you know self control and all or you know all the things that are love but how do i also like pay attention in this present moment to god who's already here who already loves more than i can imagine and who like as we you know, are invited to, to sit alongside suffering or to come alongside that this is not just my goodness. You know, this is about me being willing to trust that God is already there and that God's goodness is not changed. Mm -hmm. You know, that God's love is as much as it ever has been. You mentioned staying vulnerable and staying tender. And so many of us have put up walls because of what we've gone through, have put up these, uh, developed these coping mechanisms to not be hurt and to not be vulnerable, to not be tender in order to save us from the, from any more hurt or any more wounds or to not feel what's already happened to us. So I know part of this journey, um, has also helped healing you and your emotions and your heart through this process. Could you tell us a little bit? Are you open to telling us a little bit about that and how you're able to stay tender and vulnerable and wholehearted to do this work? Well, I think it's a mercy of God for sure. Um, Cause there's been hard seasons, both in the patients that we care for, but also more than anything over the last eight years of being a mom to kids with chronic illness and sitting beside them in their suffering. Um, but one of the things I, I believe um, is that if we're not willing to remain tender, if we're not willing to continue to feel the pain or the discomfort that we experience in different moments, then we also eliminate the possibility for joy. Mm -hmm. Like if we are, if we choose numbness and I know that's a cope, I mean, there's moments mm -hmm. of coping where we need mm -hmm. um, some of that, but there, there's also, um, there's a re-emerging, there's a re-choosing that I, it's going to hurt and I'm going to choose it. I'm going to allow the hurt um, to feel that because I also want to experience God's joy. And if I don't leave room for the pain and the sorrow and the grief, um, then I also eliminate the possibility of joy to continue to be a part of my journey. Um, so I'm not, I've not really answered well how, how to do that. Cause I think for all of us, I think it's a step-by-step -step journey of, um, and we've walked, we walk through different things. Um, our suffering is not all the same, but it's all, it, there is a universal um, element to the, the pain um, that we all experience. For me, um, one of the things 
that I continue to do almost every day that's been really, really helpful for me in staying grounded and uh, in a willingness to, like, I think, remain tender is that I go outside and I walk and I look at the sky and I listen for birds. And something over the last decade of my life, as I feel the ground beneath my feet and I am able to take deep breaths and I listen for the birds, God speaks to me that if he takes care of the birds, then he will take care of me and all those that I love. And um, that has been something that has been on repeat for me. And so I feel like maybe for all of us, there's different ways that God might remind us of his goodness or of his love. But I would encourage you that in those seasons where prayer may Prayer with words may be really hard, like silence may be what you need and to trust that God hears mm -hmm. um, even the words that you can't pray. Um, mm -hmm. You know that there are ways that God still wants to connect your heart and still wants to remind you that you are loved and you are known and that he's not he's not left you he's not left me um mm -hmm. you know even i've i've watched for two of my kids who had bone marrow transplants and they're cured of their disease but the journey to get their healing also left scars on all of us um for them physically but for all of us emotionally and just to continue to um to hold the tension of thanksgiving for what God has done for them. And also, you know, the pain and the the memory um, of, of some of the, the trauma that we also experienced. And so I feel like part of what hope is, it's a waiting and aching for what is not yet fulfilled, you know, and it's a trust that one day it will be made right. And that may not be today, but continuing to believe that, you know, that the love of Jesus that is greater than anything I can imagine, um, that it's enough and that his mercies are enough for this day. And so I just keep listening mm. for the birds and their singing. Mm, I love that because in those moments when you're walking outside and grounding with your feet on the ground and you're being present, like you're fully present, your senses, you're allowing your senses to to be fully engaged and be present from what you're smelling and hearing and sensing and feeling. And, and in those moments, the Lord is able to speak because you're right. fully open. It's like, you're going outside with these hands that are open hands, just saying, here I am, Lord, fill me, use me, heal me, whatever it is. Um, but you're being fully present in that. Um, and I love what you said about the tension you know, one of the things that you wrote that I, that I wrote down when you said you were talking about a period in your life and you said it was marked by equal parts trauma and wonder. That space that you're talking about. Um, so talking about that tension, uh, the dichotomy between what you're experiencing, how does the work that the living room does walking with our guests through the space between life and death? joy and sorrow, hope and despair. How do y'all walk with guests through that? Well, we do it together. So I feel like community has been such an important piece. Like I can't imagine doing this outside of community and outside of community where we're well-practiced in what it is to weep together as well as to rejoice together. Um, where we have made space for these patients that we refer to as guests mm. um, to be welcomed as a, in a space of hospitality, um, believing that all of us were created in the image of God and whatever life has maybe taught us, you know, otherwise of our value, that this, uh, this is the season where we get to remind one another that we were made in God's image and that we're deeply loved and that there's enough room for all of us to be able to come in. And, and I would just say that um, as it really is equal, equally hard as it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the spaces 
of garden and the ways that God has cre created this thing that, you know, like I helped to found it, but I didn't dream it, you know? And so to watch God order our steps and as we step by step, um, really ask God to help us to be faithful. I, it's grown way beyond anything um, I imagined. And we've experienced God's favor and God hasn't left us alone. And um, I would just say, you know, it's a daily, it's a daily choice to continue to come and to choose to love mm -hmm. because there, there is a way to provide patient care that you know, it, it, it's not loving, but I feel like anything that we do with love is holy to God. And so we don't separate out so much. Is this spiritual care? Is this physical care? We really believe that it's all integrated as we care for one another, that as we love um, and honor the body and the spirit and the emotions that, that God is in that. And uh, it's a hard privilege. Mm, that's so powerful and so beautiful. Um, well, as we wrap this up, there's somebody, all the somebodies who are listening and or watching who are in that place of like, man, loving is really hard right now. It really hurts. Would you just encourage them or speak to them in that place? Whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Well, I would say that no matter like what the circumstance is, that no matter how you feel, <laughs> um, that God's love isn't changing and mm -hmm. God's love is still for you. Mm -hmm. And when I was in a really, really hard place um, where it felt like our son was, I mean, so, so near death and... I remember sitting in the hospital and a friend of mine, as I was, my brain was going through all of these different feelings of like, what happens next? What happens next? I, uh, my friend spoke to me that don't get ahead of God. And I would encourage those who are just trying to make sense of maybe a senseless thing or trying to figure out something that you don't have the answers to yet. Um, that don't get ahead of God that he, he's closer than, you know, he's closer than you feel and continue to, to lean in and to try to find community to walk with um, through whatever it may be that, that you find yourself in. Mm, so, so good. Um, and I would, I would just add that this journey of love is as much about and for you as it is for them. The Lord is working in and through you. Maybe it's bringing down those walls. Maybe it's um, drawing you closer to him, whatever it is. It, it's, it's always a win-win with the Lord. It's always like this two-way, this two-way street of how he uses us, but he ministers to us in the process. Um, so I would say, I would echo the words of Julie is, is to hold on. Well, y'all, um, I, I know you probably have lots of questions for Julie. Um, her, her latest book is Brave Love, Julie Boyd. Um, and I would just really encourage you if you are um, a mama, if you are human, if you are a Christ follower, she writes so beautifully, shares stories that will just, um, grab your heart and inspire you to love bravely as well. Julie, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. Well, yeah, y'all, thank you for joining us here on my Full Life and Faith Leaps podcast. Um, if you know somebody who's in a similar situation, a tough spot, would you share this with them so they could be encouraged too? And until next time, may you continue to get free, live full, and thank God.
Well, friends, thank you for joining us today on My Full Life and Faith Leaps podcast. If you enjoyed our time together and are taking away a nugget that has inspired your soul and success, would you share this episode with a loved one who could use it too? And if you haven't already, take a moment to rate and review this podcast and help me help others fuel and fulfill their faith journeys. Until next time, I'm Tiffany Jo Baker, a three-time surrogate, speaker, and strategizer who loves to help you birth your God-given dreams at home and around the world. Now go do all the things God has called and created you to do with the grace and gifts God has given you.